here's a cool little problem. I claim that I have ESP, uh, the extrasensory perception. I have people flip a coin, look at the result without letting me see it, and then I guess what the result was. To prove my efficacy, I predict the results of 43 flips in front of a live audience, and I get 28 of them correct. So I'm not perfect, but am I actually better at guessing than I should be? Am I, do I actually have ESP? Now we're going to set this up in a generic kind of form for the hypothesis test here. So if I were not good at guessing, if essentially it was a random flip, then my null hypothesis here, right, under, um, under normal assumptions would be that my predicted amount that I get correct which should be around 50%, right, I should get it right. Since it's a coin flip, I'd be right half the time and wrong half the time. But if I'm trying to prove that I have ESP, then I'm hoping to establish that my P is actually bigger than 50%. And I don't have to be 100%, I just have to be convincingly or statistically significantly higher than average. Or higher than what we would expect. Okay, so in the second stage, we're going to have to go through here and try to think about the model that's flying around in the background. Am I allowed to use this as a valid model? Well, assuming that the coin flips are a random sample of all coin flips that could ever occur, and that there was no kind of shenanigans going on here, then yeah, this would be a completely, this would be a randomized sample of, of all flips, it'd be less than 10% of the entire population, no big deal there. And so I should be allowed to be able to use the statistical methods of the, uh, the sample mean or the sample proportion. So now in stage three, I'm going to actually just run this on my calculator. So you'll have to trust me that I'm doing this correctly, but if you run, if you assume that you have a model, a Z model floating around in the background here with a mean of 0.5 and a standard deviation of, uh, what would be, it'd be 0 0.5, 0 0.5 over, how many flips, 43 radical, then it turns out that my calculator is dictating that the Z score would be 1.98 approximately and that my p-value, my probability of being that good at guessing, getting 28 out of 43 right, that would only occur about 0.0237 of the time. So in other words, assuming that it was a fair coin, and assuming that I was just randomly guessing, I should get 50%, I ended up actually getting 28 out of 43, which is above 50%. Is it hugely above 50%? Well, it turns out that that p-value means that the probability of me randomly guessing and getting that percentage correct, that would only happen about 2.37% of the time. 2.37% of the time. So this seems to be providing evidence that I am actually better than random guessing. So in stage four, what we conclude here, because our p-value is rather low, in fact, I'm going to use the cutoff level of 5%, which is kind of standard, my conclusion would be to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says that my probability of making that many guesses correct is so low only 2.37% of the time that that assumption is probably false. I think that this is not a good null hypothesis. So I'm rejecting the H0 and I'm concluding I have evidence that the true proportion of coins that I can predict the result for, that I can predict the result for, is above the claimed 50%. Right. So that means that I am either, either the coin was biased in some way or I'm cheating, or I actually do have ESP. So this is how we use a hypothesis test to try to establish that I actually have extrasensory perception.